We're now at our last Hall of Famer tonight. I almost don't need to introduce him because everybody's talked about him all night. <laughs> Stood up, probably. Do you tired yet, Nick? You get up and down, up and down. All right, let me let me read your bio. And they give you three hours and forty-seven minutes, but you can't go over. <laughs> all right, Vic Lindell, A.K.A. Mr. Volleyball, is known as a visionary, a leader, an innovator, a founder, a coach, an administrator, a mentor, a commentator, and referee. From starting the Winfield and Williams Lake Camps and Pacific Rim Championships, to setting the model for TBC program, to developing a training plan that led to BC's double gold medal win in the 1975 Canada Games, to being a founding member of organizations such as BC, Bo BC Volleyball Association, BC High School Volleyball Programs, and Victoria Volleyball Association, it would be an understatement to say that Vic has been influential in the development of our sport in BC. Vic was inducted into the Volleyball Canada Hall of Fame in 2000 and the BC Sports Hall of Fame in 2001 and is still actively coaching today. If he's not hiking through Spain, coaching in Zimbabwe, or scuba diving somewhere around the world. Vic also was the developer of the Starburst serve receive, which used to drive coaches crazy and referees crazy and the servers on the other team because they had no idea what was going on and the majority of the servers were missed at that point in time. But uh, so he's a he's an innovator. Vic Lindell, congratulations. Come on. was founded. I happen to have been part of that founding. In talking to the people here and looking at the awards over this year and last year, and looking at what British Columbia has done in volleyball, we are clearly the leaders in the country, and it's been my fortunate opportunity to be part of it. Leaders are made not born. And that's an absolutely essential element that we need to think about because we're leaders here and we need to help raise the next set of leaders. We have that responsibility. Conrad said, surround yourself with greatness. Follow your dreams. I was fortunate to be surrounded by greatness, and that was what enabled me to be nominated here as a builder and to continue building the sport. I did a clinic last week at Ladysmith, and actually one of the pictures in the program was a little camp that I ran for my grandson in Nanaimo. I did a volleyball camp in Zimbabwe, and the level was phenomenal. I'm going to Ecuador, and I'm going there to do some hiking, but a friend of mine said, well, could you do some volleyball for us? So I'm going to introduce them to Double Double, which is four-man volleyball. It's a unique feature, one that you might hear about if you follow Ecuador volleyball in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Surround yourself with greatness. You know, that's not just a throwaway statement. It's important to look around and associate with quality people. I was fortunate as I started to go through my history. My father saw that our community in Cordova Bay needed a softball program. Every year when they opened the opening ceremonies at the Cordova Bay Softball Association, they say, and the founder, Vic Lindell. I mean, I think it was me, but it was my dad. <laughs> he also saw that we needed a badminton hall. We built the first Cordova Bay badminton hall. My mother was a badminton coach. I was fortunate to have had those leaders help me in my career. And as I was thinking through this, I thought, yeah. And my mother even volunteered to be the Akela at the local Cub Pack and became one of the leaders in the community. 
Leaders are made, not born. My wife, who passed away a few years ago, was an absolute tremendous influence and absolutely allowed me to do the coaching I did to help with the programs that I did and to raise four children. I was fortunate that my wife convinced me when we met that I should go to university and get a university degree and teach. And then support me through all the times that I'd be out coaching and as Carol Bishop knows, traveling all over North America with volleyball programs. We would drive, Carol may remember this, from Vancouver to California every year to play volleyball at Christmas. I have to thank my wife for allowing me to fly as the team drove. <laughs> How did I get started in volleyball? Surround yourself with greatness. I was lucky I was in the Air Force in Comox, and Comox, and a Bay Dogs from Comox. And I was a PE teacher in the Air Force, and Flying Officer Shaw came up and he said, you're an athlete, we need one more player on the team. A little bit like my introduction to Dale Oman, only it was, Dale Oman, you're tall. He said, come on out, so I went out. And oh, he studied the volleyball. He had books on it. And we played the 3 3 system. And not many people know the 3 3 system. <laughs> that meant that you had one setter and one hitter, and they were a team. If the hitter wasn't doing very well, the setter was out. The, the, that was the program. It was the 3 3 system. But that got me started. I played in the armed services, volleyball championships. Thank you, Flying Officer Shaw, wherever you are. And then I was teaching in Vancouver. And Mary McDonald who was teaching at John Oliver. And Nora McDermott was coaching at Air Camera. And this one day I'm out watching our high school girls play volleyball. And this guy sidled up beside me and he said, you're a Vic Lindell, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Um, I think you played in the Air Force, didn't you? Well, that got me going a little braggy there, you know. Well, why don't you get a boys volleyball team in Air Camera? I go, Maybe you don't know, there is no boys volleyball in Vancouver. Oh yeah, but that's okay. He said, we, and this is interesting, we have an incredible elementary school program and they all feed in to your school. Oh. He said, you can have a team and they can play in the senior B men's league and you can play. <laughs> and I went, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, this guy was persistent. His name was Les Heron, which Dale Oman alluded to. Les Heron was literally one of the founders of volleyball in British Columbia. And by the way, he wasn't a custodian at a secondary school, he was a custodian at an elementary school, and had started coaching because they didn't have a coach. And he studied all the books. Anyway, he said, well, let's get a notice in the bulletin. Well, who is this guy? We put a notice in the bulletin, 30 boys showed up the next day. Next thing you know, I'm coaching volleyball. Next thing you know, Les Heron says, would you like the uh, UBC men's team to come around and do a practice? I went, what? So he brought them in. And then the next thing he says, you need to get your national referees rating. Next thing I know, I'm getting that. That's such an example of surround yourself with greatness. The Winfield volleyball camp was clearly, well, it was certainly the first outdoor volleyball camp in North America. But we lucked out again with the greatness. I asked Al Skates, who was coach of UCLA, if he'd come up to be our head coach. He said, Vic, I'll do you one better. I'm not coming. Al didn't like to do much in the way of organization. But he said, we'll send Val Keller. And we were fortunate, and I don't know how many of you know, it was Val Keller who was the foundation of our volleyball camp because he brought all the drills and the ideas and I get credited with the Winfield Volleyball Camp but it was Val Keller and then we were fortunate to bring in the, the Japanese coaches we were fortunate to bring in the coaches from, from France, from Germany again be prepared to surround yourself with greatness Val Keller passed away with an extremely valuable
valuable component of our program. And one of the subtle influences was Mr. Matsudaira. He invited me to come to Japan. He said, would you like to come to Japan for three months, all expenses paid? I thought, three months, I'll be divorced. Now, how about two? I, I didn't want to offend him. You know, he didn't worry about that, so two months. But what influenced me was when we had his book translated, Winning Volleyball. I got a phone call from Al Skates. He said, what are you guys using that word, Winning Volleyball? That was Al Skates' book. But in Winning Volleyball, talk about follow your dreams, which is the other thing that Conrad said. He wrote the book of exactly how Japan was going to win the gold medal in the 72 Olympics. And he published it before the Olympics. <laughs> you need to be prepared to step out. And sure, I had the star bus. And we call it the breakout. Service reception. And no one ever used that. And no one had any idea where we were going. And the umpires had no idea we were out of bounds or uh, out of rotation. But it was different. And he didn't even mention that I was the only coach in the world to have a setter penetrate from left back. <laughs> yeah. You've got to be prepared to follow your dreams. Now, in Matsudaro's case, he was the guy that introduced the world to the multiple attack system. By the way, he called it the sacrifice system. And I said, explain that. He said, well, Vic, we need three people to attack the net. Two have to sacrifice. North America didn't know that you had to sacrifice. They like, didn't send me. <laughs> Actually, in that quick attack system, I remember when Dale Oman came back from his tour in Czechoslovakia. And in Czechoslovakia, they taught Dale to hit the ball if it was set 30 to 50 feet in the air. I said, Dale, we're running a quick attack system. Yeah. Remember that, Dale? <laughs> but do you know what they said about Mr. Matsudar? And I read the newspaper article. We think Mr. Matsudar is going to leave with his senses. <laughs> dare to dream. Dare to follow your dreams and surround yourself with great people, which is what we have in this room tonight. Continue to spread the word. And yes, I had a great time with camps in Zimbabwe where the level was extremely high. And now I'm going to do something in Ecuador in April. I continue to surround myself with greatness. And I continue to dare to dream. Uh, she couldn't attend. She was a uh, nominated in the Hall of Fame last year.